Good morning. I'm Sean Harrison, Board of Selectmen. I hope this uh, finds everyone well and healthy. It is Monday morning, just after 8.30, and I am at Town Hall with Seth, as well as Jim Boudreau, our Town Administrator, to give you folks an update. Um, it's been, I think, what's last week? Did you update? Thursday was the last okay. one, yep. All right. So, like I said, I think I'll turn it over to Jim, then I have a couple of comments or questions for Jim. So thank you. Uh, thank you, Sean. As of last Thursday, we met there were 43 cases of COVID-19 in situate. Um, since then, we had four cases on Thursday, none on Friday, two on Saturday, and then none on Easter. So we are now at 49 cases. Uh, we do have the one death. That is the only death that we have had to date in situate, which um, we hope that stays like that. Uh, according to the experts in the state and national levels, uh, the peak is going to hit here in Massachusetts between now and probably April 20th. Uh, Dr. Fanucci, who is uh, Trump's advisor on this, used the term yesterday, cautiously optimistic, to describe how the numbers nationwide are looking. So it looks like social distancing is working. Uh, let's keep it up, situate. Stay home if you need to go out and maintain your social distancing. Uh, if you're going to the store or something, you should be wearing a mask at this point and gloves if possible. Uh, this is, again, going to be critically important over the next week or so. So please maintain your social dis distancing no matter where you are. If you are in a place where you can't social distance, you should have a mask on, even if that's outside. Uh, we're going to continue to model those places where we do see people congregating, like Widow's Walk in the Lighthouse. Uh, I walked the golf course with my children on Saturday. There was a lot of people out there walking. The vast majority of them were following the rules, were staying on the cart pass, uh, staying in the rough. Um, I did see several people playing golf, which is not allowed, uh, and I saw a lot of people walking right down the middle of the fairways and in some cases across the greens. Uh, the golf course is a valuable asset for the town of Situate, and doing things like that are going to damage that asset. So we'll monitor it. Uh, if those few bad apples can't follow the rules, then they'll make us have to close it again. So please, you shouldn't be playing golf. Stay on the cart pass. Stay in the rough. Keep off the fairways and keep off the greens. The town website has a new COVID-19 page dedicated to all the information we have about COVID-19, updated links, updated information. All you need to go is go to the Town of Situate website, situatema.gov, click on the red banner at the top of the page, and that will take you right to our COVID-19 page. Starting next week, uh, in an effort to help protect our vulnerable seniors, we will be offering senior hours at the transfer station. That'll be Tuesday, April 21st. Residents 60 years or older with a Situate Transfer Station sticker are invited to the facility between 8 and 10. Uh, we ask everyone else to respect this accommodation and come into the transfer station during different hours. Uh, when you do come in, again, follow the safety guidelines. We'll see how that works. Uh, if people don't seem to be respecting the senior hours, then we'll try to make it mandatory. But right now, we're going to do it on a voluntary basis. We'll start next Tuesday. After that, we'll probably switch the date, but because of the holiday next week, We'll do it on Tuesday. Again, the senior hours next week will be Tuesday from 8 to 10. Uh, finally, we did post last night a high wind warning for today on our website. We're expecting heavy rain and extremely high winds starting this morning through early evening. The National Weather Service said we will have winds forecast from 8, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Winds from the south steady 25 to 40 miles an hour with gusts potentially exceeding 60 miles an hour. Winds of this magnitude will likely bring down limbs and trees causing scattered to moderate power outages depending upon the maximum wind gusts. Um, if you need to go out, do so quickly this morning before the wind picks up. Uh, get out and secure any loose furniture you may have in your backyard. If you have generators, test them. Make sure you have good gas. We are not expecting uh, any splash over or any coastal events from this, but this will be a fairly strong windstorm. We are anticipating power outages. National Grid will be out there as quickly as they can. They are organized for the storm. However, you need to be aware if the winds are above 35 miles an hour, the bucket trucks do not go out for the safety of the National Grid employees. So even though the wind might be dying down, if it is still blowing too hard, we have to wait for that to get down before the trucks come out. So the good thing is it's not winter time. Uh, we're not going to be worried about frozen pipes and things like that. But people should be prepared that we will, uh, we will definitely have scattered to moderate power outages from this windstorm today. Only thing I can add is I hope you're wrong. Uh, 
it's good and bad that it's not winter. I look at it like there might be some people out walking, especially if it's still daylight hours. So the only thing I could add to, Jim, what you just said is, you know, if they see, if folks come across wires that are down, you have to assume they're live, that that's for sure, and that they're high voltage, not just cable or television or, you know, something low voltage. So just be... If you uh, see wires down, call 911. Thank you. Uh, and the fire department will come out and investigate. Also, if you are in national grid, you can call the national grid number or the Eversource number and let them know that the wires are down. But definitely call uh, 911. We'll send someone out to investigate, and then we'll get that into the triage list of things to be repaired. But as Sean said, always assume every wire in the street is live. Don't go near them. Don't touch them. Just call someone, and we'll come out and take a look at them. If you're in your automobile and you come across you know, inadvertently you drive over one, do not get out of your car. Get out of your your car. car is grounded, stay in your car, do not get out of it. Yep. So, yep. Uh, and then, like Jim said, then call the necessary authorities. Last thing I have is um, just to thank everyone who took part and organized the Easter Bunny car parade yesterday. Uh, I saw on Facebook it was very well received, I think very much needed for the town. Uh, a little bit of good cheer on Easter Sunday. So thank you to everybody who organized it and participated and hopefully next year at Easter we'll all be back to normal. That's great. I should, if I can just dovetail on that, just um, I was involved in one of those parades for our, you know, healthcare providers. Uh, this one happened to be a nurse right around in the next neighborhood over. And you know, we we thank all those folks for you know staying at home doing what they have to do. But the you know especially thank you for all our police and fire and all the nurses and doctors that are out there putting themselves at risk and then their own families. They come home and. And then they have to uh, really be uh, extra careful. So it's, it's just, it, it's getting old, and I realize that. It's getting old for everyone. So, but like Jim alluded to earlier, I think it, it's working. And from what I heard, yeah, that when it's, they're not continuing to rise, these cases. And to Jim's point about the cases going up to 49, I think you mentioned an important thing. The last two were maybe within a household, it's so it's not like they're spreading it to neighbors, family, you know, friends. It's mostly just the immediate family. Yeah, the last two we had were in an address that we already had confirmed COVID-19 cases. Still, so it, it is probably within the same family, um, and as you said, that means that it's not out and about. But um, the numbers are, are going up, but they're not going up as substantial as they used to, and hopefully uh, we start to see them turn down now. Yes, like. A, a, a couldn't agree more. The only one other thing that I'd like for you to address, if you don't mind, Jim, is, you know, people are still, you know, if they have to drop off tax payments or permits or anything at town hall, could you just explain, I think I know the answer, but could you explain the procedure that people, if they have business, is they drop it off at the slot? Could you explain how that might work and the skeleton crew that is here? Sure. If you need to drop off paperwork, you can't do it electronically. Uh, the front door of the town hall, on the right as you look at it has a mail slot and a bin outside uh, in case something doesn't fit in the mail slot make sure it's addressed to the proper department put it through the mail slot or in the bin it'll get to where it needs to go and they will get back to you um, probably check it quite often i would imagine they check it a couple times a day usually in the morning and, and around lunchtime and then before they leave at the end of the day they make sure everything that's out there is in so um they're very active in taking care of that they process stuff as quickly as they can and they get it back out great Great. I don't think I have anything else to add at this time other than thank, thank the folks for doing everything that they're doing. No, and, uh, uh, we're, we're doing the best we can. The town hall people, you, you know, the police and fire out there, but uh, we have the DPW working, the water and sewer guys uh, are all working every day, um, and the people here at the town hall, we're doing the best we can to keep things keep things running. Hopefully the storm today will not be too disruptive, um, but you know, we, will, we will deal with, with what comes. That's right. Well, thanks. Thank I appreciate you. your time, Jim. Thank you, Seth. Hope everyone's well.